So welcome um, everybody to the Ocean Sciences um, Information Session. It's part of the Everything Science Orientation for the Faculty of Science. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things first. I see that everybody's already done that, but just as you come in, if you could turn off your video and mute yourself, um, it just helps keep the bandwidth down so that we can hear everything that um, Danielle and Annie have to say. <laughs> um, and another thing, there'll be a chance for questions at the end. So if you have any questions during, just type them into the chat and we'll get to them as we um, take breaks for chats. Um, through, obviously keep the chat appropriate to the discussion that we're having. Um, and with that, Danielle, I can give you the floor. Hi, everybody. Uh, I can see a couple of the names coming up there. I think I've been in contact uh, through email. Uh, certainly for anybody that's joining, uh, you can get hold of me anytime at oceans at mon.ca or dnichols at mon.ca. Um, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions regarding the program. Uh, this is quite a different time for us. Uh, usually we'd be in the science lobby with a invert touch tank and part of a scavenger hunt and lots of students coming to visit me, whether they're interested in ocean science or marine biology. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of miss that because it's great interaction, but uh, we thought we'd just do a quick little presentation and then show you some of our resources. And maybe after I finish the presentation, uh, hold off your questions till then, and then uh, we could just, I could answer uh, anything you have. So think about them and, and uh, certainly let me know as we go through. Let's see if I can't share my screen now. Hold on now. Told you I had some difficulties this morning. <laughs> All right, can everybody see that I'm assuming? If you can give me a thumbs up in your emoji thing, great. <laughs> okay. So, um, if we're the Department of Ocean Science. A lot of people refer to us as a ocean science center because we were just a research facility in the Faculty of Science up until about 2012. So being a department is pretty new to us. So to give you some idea of who we are, our vision is to be the International Center for Research and Education in Marine Bioscience. Our, we have five main research areas and our faculty members can overlap through some of these or maybe they're just in one, uh, but they boil down to physiology, biochemistry and molecular biology, biological and chemical oceanography, behavioral and population ecology, aquaculture and fisheries, and our brand new biogeochemistry. Uh, our mandates provide uh, scientists, whether they're here at Memorial, uh, nationally or internationally, for first-rate facilities for unlimited research and training in cold ocean sciences. And we provide graduate and now undergraduate education in marine science. I think I'm gonna flip through the next one. So our academic programs, just so you know what we look like, I mentioned that we weren't an academic unit until 2012, and that means we're the first new uh, academic department in the Faculty of Science since the 1970s. So to say we had a learning curve is, <laughs> it's all new to everybody really, because no one was around when the other ones were created. Um, so we've always had grad students. Um, now we've uh, taken over uh, having our own grad programs. So we have uh, MSc and PhD in marine biology. And in about 20, um, Annie anyway, might have to correct me on this, I think 2014, we launched our uh, undergrad minor programs in oceanography and sustainable aquaculture and fisheries ecology. And then in 2017, we rolled out our undergraduate programs in our BSCs, the majors, in ocean science, ocean science, environmental systems, and marine biology. So Annie is actually going, Dr. Mercier is gonna talk a little bit more about those programs as we go through. So we have many facilities down in Logie Bay, and some of you may have visited the seals or the touch tank during the summer months, which is not happening this year. First time in 18 years for me. Um, so we have all kinds of aquatic facilities for holding a variety of uh, freshwater and saltwater flora and fauna. Obviously, we're 
we're bigger on the saltwater side of things. Uh, we have certified divers that uh, go out year round to collect for us and help with field work. Uh, so if you guys were in the actual biology labs uh, and you're working on a specimen, more than likely they have come from our divers and are collected. So if you did a sea urchin lab or whatnot, these are collected by our divers. They also collect all my critters for our uh, invertebrate touch tank and uh, our school program stuff. Uh, we have many laboratories at the facility. Uh, we have flowing seawater and, and fresh water in many of these. And then we have areas for um, analytical instrumentation and many common use rooms uh, that students can use. And this is not just undergraduate uh, students, it's also undergraduate students who uh, take on undergraduate uh, MUSEP positions, work term placements, as well as honor students. So there's many opportunities to get work experience. In 2014, uh, we finally had our cold ocean deep sea research facility uh, come in operation. This facility is to provide researchers with access to state-of-the-art infrastructure and equipment for the study of fresh water and marine organisms, especially those from the cold waters of the Arctic and North Atlantic Oceans. So we're really looking at those species that are unique to our ecosystem, and uh, it's unique in, in, in Canada because we're the only ones that are getting those Arctic waters coming down from Labrador. In this facility, we have this great area for looking at disease challenge. So they're able to go in here, they all suit up, they study diseases that occur in fish, and they're able to look at different vaccines and how they work within the population. We have uh, these deep sea research vessels, um, and actually Dr. Mercier's students have used these vessels in the past. Uh, these great, these uh, vessels can be pressurized up to 3,000 meters deep. They're flow through. Um, they can look at many different things with an endoscope. They're they're, they're pretty small, but they can they can certainly they're, they're unique to us. Um, they're actually uh, number seven and eight in the world, and they're the only two in North America. Um, Dr. Mercier's students have looked at invertebrates such as sea cucumbers and sea stars under pressure, and we've had other researchers who looked at lumpfish and that as well. So not only are they looking at some of the species in their natural habitat and how they react and reproduce and feed, uh, they're also looking at what happens under pressure with these animals as well. How does that change as the pressure increases or decreases? <clears throat> We also have these uh, multi tank systems, and these are great for anybody looking at doing research by changing all the environmental parameters per single tank. Um, they, uh, they, they can be chilled or they can be brought up uh, to a certain temperature. We can change the salinity. We could have a closed system so that new the water isn't coming in from the outside so that we're not getting plankton and all that coming in. Um, or we can have an open system so the natural seawater is flowing in. <clears throat> the Doc Aquatic Research Building, one of our other facilities down here, uh, began full operation in 1999, so it's been around for a while now. And this building was really created to work with industry to help bring about aquaculture within the province. So years ago, we were pretty limited in terms of what kind of aquaculture we had in this province. And so the government was very uh, interested in setting up a way that we could help foster its growth. So we train industry personnel, but we also use this for uh, teaching uh, undergrad and graduate students in uh, animal husbandry. They do different kind of research projects up there. Uh, so it's a great place to train students as well as uh, industry staff. In this building, we've had uh, many different uh, types of fish species or other organisms that have been held in here, um, more, more fin fish than anything else. So this is our broodstock room. And in this facility, um, we've had everything from cod, Atlantic halibut, Atlantic salmon, yellowtail flounder. What you see in the tank there uh, now, uh, and the picture to the left are cunners, and most of the, what's in the facility now are lump fish. These animals are brought in because they really want to look at how to get sea lice removed from salmon in a biological fashion. So this is one of the biggest projects right now. When I first started there, uh, codfish were <laughs> very important. They were a huge pr project on looking at uh, egg to plate. Uh, 
Uh, the whole place was full of cod, and these were large codfish we had in the broodstock facility. Some of them were five feet in length, um, five, six feet. They were big guys. Uh, we also had Atlantic halibut. Once again, a very big fish, very hard to manage within a facility, some upwards of uh, six, seven feet and, you know, over 100 pounds. Um, but uh, it's all unique and, and the trials and tribulations of trying to figure it out. So this is what this facility is all about. Once we have uh, whatever animal that we are looking to bring about to production or looking at quality or feeding regimes, we bring them into hatchery into the first feed rooms. Um, in the bottom picture there, you can actually see a little lump fish, one of my favorite uh, fish species that they have there. So cute. Um, so we were, we're able to do, like I said, feeding trials. They're looking at growth. Some of it is just simply uh, growing them to a certain size so that we can bring them out to a cage site, either on the south usually on the south coast. <clears throat> in this facility, they're actually able to uh, produce all their own live feed. So when the larvae come out, before they can go on pellet feed, they have to be able to have larvae to start with. And we enrich these little guys, uh, these rotifers and artemia, with a little protein lipid mixture. I kind of like say they're feeding them little Big Macs. And uh, they are able to provide it to the fish. For a codfish, is about day 60 before they can wean them off onto pellet food. The bottom picture there is actually a very tiny cod larvae eating an artemia. Uh, we also have algae culture, and this was big in the, the first part of when the building opened because they used to green the cod tanks with it. They found that that wasn't necessary. It didn't promote better growth or coloration, so it, it, it kind of ceased. So it used to be a bigger operation. It has since returned because we have an oyster company now working there. Of course, they need to have all their own larvae to help um, at their own algal to support the larvae that they're uh, bringing in. So I'm coming to the end here, and this is probably my uh, favorite part here. And Carter's wearing a great shirt to promote the uh, ocean science there today. Um, we are one of the uh, biggest units probably within the university in terms of engagement. So at the university, there's three pillars. One is uh, teaching. The second is research, and the third is engagement. So that's how we interact with the public. So since about 2000 or 1999, 2000, um, tours stopped inside the Ocean Science Center and they were brought outside. And since then it's been running every summer and we've received 22,000 visitors from June 1st to uh, Labor Day weekend. Um, since then, we've also developed a traveling touch tank so we can go out to schools for STEM days. Uh, we go to the Geo Center, um, you know, even to the Janeway Hospital. So our idea is just try to promote uh, marine education uh, in the province. Another thing about uh, that we tried to create was a school program. So within the uh, normal school curriculum, uh, high school curriculum, there's not a lot of marine biology, and we thought that was really lacking. So we are working with a group called the Oceans Learning Partnership. And since uh, 2013, we've created a hands-on marine biology program from high school students. And uh, I think we've brought in over around 3,200 students since then. And uh, it's very important for us. One, it's engagement. Uh, two, it's a great recruitment tool into our program so people are aware of what we're doing, especially we're very new. Um, it also provides graduate students an opportunity uh, to interact with the students one-on-one, uh, -on -one, explain the research and, and uh, be engaging with them. So it's, it's, a, it's a win-win for the whole department. I think that's about it for me on that. Does anybody have any questions? I can't see Carter, if anybody, can you see the chat? I can, yeah, I'll pass them along if there's any questions. Okay. Nothing yet. Doesn't look like there's anything coming in right now. Okay. So before I per pass it off to Dr. Mercier, who's the deputy head and uh, undergrad officer for the department, just want to show you our website here. Um, if you're looking for information on our programs, you can certainly go under the undergrad uh, site uh, at uh, www.mun.ca backslash OSC and then go to undergrad. And here has on the left-hand side, you can see all the information that you would need. Uh, so if you're looking student health for deferred exams, uh, this is our undergrad society. Um, so if you wanted to join in with that, you certainly can. And this is who our members are. Um, 
Uh, Carter is also a member of the uh, undergrad society, so you can certainly ask him questions. Uh, typically, we have a shuttle that comes to the OSC, but with COVID restrictions, this is uh, certainly changed. So um, that will be updated in the future as things change within the university. Um, and here you can apply uh, to our majors uh, using this link, or certainly you can do another form online and send it to me. Um, and we have our undergrad handbook as well. So that's linked in on the left hand side. This is a great resource for any new student, even if you're not sure if you want to go into ocean science, ocean science, environmental systems or marine biology, um, because this will lay down everything you need to know about what ocean science is, who the contacts are, what the programs look like and what kind of courses you need to take. So certainly uh, link into this, have a look through and it should answer a lot of your questions or at least uh, bring questions to mind that you can then come back to us with. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to Dr. Speaking Murphy. of questions, um, we've okay. got one that just came in. How would doing a minor look like? Um, oh, Annie, did you want to uh, take that since you're going to be talking about programs? <laughs> anyways, or <laughs> uh, for sure, and I'll actually, I'll actually be uh, uh, going over that uh, a little bit. So um, uh, the handbook. <laughs> for sure is a place where you can see exactly what curriculum you have to take. So what are the prerequisites, what are the courses that you need to take before you can uh, be accepted into the minor? And uh, obviously contacting Danielle to uh, get, you know, the first thing I always recommend students do is I, uh, make an appointment with Danielle and, and just about the the program uh, in general to see how you uh, how your your courses that you've done already fit with the minor and, and whatnot. But generally, it's uh, uh, taking nine courses uh, that are pre-identified in the program so that you can. Uh, and we've had students about half an hour doing either the oceanography or the sustainable aquaculture um, uh, and ecology. Uh, and fisheries ecology at minor, but uh, yeah, so the handbook first place to look and then making an appointment with Danielle to actually check out. And we've got uh, at the end of the handbook, if you look there, you'll see a, um, a place where you can actually, uh, I guess, uh, tabulate your progress. So you can see exactly what courses you need. And so you can tick which ones you've done. And so it kind of lays down a map for you uh, to see how well you're, uh, you're aligned with, uh, with the, the programs. Right. So I guess I can. Uh, uh, I'll just because uh, getting into those uh, programs, uh, I can uh, share my screen. So uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, as Danielle says. Uh, my name is Annie Mercier, and I'm a professor uh, at the Department of Ocean Sciences, uh, and I'm currently the deputy head. Uh, and the uh, chair of the undergrad uh, studies committee. So uh, pretty much, uh, you know, I've been involved with the uh, the development of our undergrad uh, programs for the past uh, five years, uh, roughly. So, uh, and I also teach the uh, first year course, which I'm going to uh, be showing uh, in a sec. So I'm just going to share my screen now. So hopefully you're seeing that. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, so, yeah, so this is where, so on the first, on the very first page, uh, we, you know, when you tick on undergrad um, uh, programs there, this is where you'll see the full description of you were asking about uh, the minors, the majors. So you have uh, the major uh, here, the two uh, majors. We have the joint major in marine biology. So you can uh, click on that and see exactly what courses and um, uh, also need to mention that we have honors programs associated with uh, these majors so that you can um, also, if you're interested in, in conducting some research in the fabulous uh, facilities that Danielle has shown and you're interested in, in, in doing an honors, both the marine biology and the ocean sciences uh, stream uh, have honors uh, attached to them. And if you scroll down, you do have uh, the minor uh, in, o in ocean sciences and the minor uh, in uh, sustainable aquaculture and fisheries ecology, which so here is all the links that you can uh, uh, click on and actually access exactly which courses are associated with these programs. And you can also click on the actual calendar description of the 
programs which link to different courses. Um, so that's for your, your go-to place. Uh, and we've got a link uh, here also to all our supplies. So if you're kind of wondering if courses have uh, any interest for you, you click on this, it will bring you on this page, uh, which is actually outlining all our courses. So we have a number of them from uh, first year courses all the way to advanced courses. And right now you'll see that there's uh, some of them have regular version and remote version because like everyone we've had to uh, develop a slightly different um, uh, delivery styles to make sure uh, we can continue to deliver our courses under the restrictions of the, the pandemic. Uh, so you can see the different syllabi uh, associated with uh, these courses. And uh, just to give you a brief outline of what's happening uh, this coming semester. So in the fall 2020, we have this table that you can access and you can see a little bit of what's been done for the different courses, which are going to be in a slightly different style uh, this semester. So we're offering 1,000, 2,300, uh, 3,000, 3,600, 4,200 and 4,300 this uh, coming fall. And you can see a little bit uh, of preliminary information on um, what the styles are going to be. Uh, and if you want uh, more detail, so you do have all the links to all the instructors if you have questions. Uh, and if you have uh, further questions, uh, you can also uh, look at the syllabi, as I mentioned, because all these courses now have their most up-to-date uh, syllabi uh, um, online so that you can consult them. Um, so, as I was uh, mentioning, uh, I, I'm uh, also teaching the first year course, which is this one. So, Ocean Sciences 1000, Exploration uh, of the World Ocean. Um, so, this is our flagship course that kind of gains you entry into our uh, stream uh, of programs. Um, and it's already in its normal um, I guess, I guess style, it's already a very different course, a very unique course, because it's a blended format, meaning that there's a um, combination of online uh, activities and of um, 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 uh, into uh, the class. Now we also have a fully online version, and that's not a version that was developed for the purpose of the pandemic situation. It was developed as uh, at, you know, uh, at the onset, so it's a fully developed online course. Uh, and uh, we are now offering that one instead of the blended uh, version. But in, in general, the blended is in the fall and the online version is in the winter. So to show you what it looks like, so that's kind of the course shell for the... Annie, I'm just going to stop you for a second. We're having some feedback with you. Uh, Carter, can you hear that as well? A uh, couple. Oh, you're you're yeah, still and just a little bit of feedback. Yeah, you can hear you, Andy, but every now and then it cuts out a little tiny bit. I, I okay. don't know if it's just on your end, uh, but continue along. I, it, it seems we can still hear you, but a couple of people have brought it up in the chat there. Oh, sorry about that. Um, yeah, yeah it's just like it's a... going. I don't know. Yeah, it's an old one. So <laughs> you're hearing me, okay? <laughs> Right now, yeah, every now and then it's just like a high pitched squeal, <laughs> but uh, it seems to like go and come. So uh, continue. Okay. on. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, apologies. I don't want to. Uh, oh, I could perhaps try to switch, but anyway, might not be a good idea. So hopefully with the images, what I'm uh, getting at. Um, so it's. Uh, this is the, the shell for the 1000 uh, course. And uh, as I was mentioning, uh, there's, um, uh, when you look at the contents, it's actually um, uh, virtual expeditions uh, that you have to go through. Um, so that's kind of the, the way that we, um, we work uh, through the course is that there's a self-paced uh, components that students have to go through and then uh, there's further um, pieces to the module to go more in depth, which we appropriately call dives. Um, so you kind of navigate through the course using um, the waypoints and you get through the material. So there's various links uh, that you go through. Um, so that's kind of the, the unique style that we have for um, our first year course. 
uh, and you can check out, as I said, the syllabus if you want uh, more information uh, about that. Um, so um, yeah, I won't uh, I won't stay on too long then, uh, since there's kind of uh, audio uh, issues. But if you do have questions about either the programs or uh, courses and the curriculum, I'm glad to answer them. All right. Thank you, Annie. Um, I don't think the message was lost. I think you could still like hear the message through um, okay. the feedback. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. No worries. Just a couple uh, questions that came in. Um, would you suggest taking physics 1050 slash 1051 instead of 1020, 1021? Would there be any more any benefit in taking the 1050 instead of 1020? I guess I can leave that to Danielle, but uh, I guess it depends on what uh, side of uh, ocean sciences uh, is interesting to you. So I don't know, Danielle, if you want to, uh, you've, uh, you're the, the more hands-on counselor here for students. <laughs> So this question comes up quite a lot uh, with students. Uh, you can do 10, 20, and 21, and uh, there is sort of like a go to the register. I think it's a, a standard waiver. So when you go to graduate, that will just be accepted in lieu of 10, uh, 1050 and 1051. However, I think if you can do physics 1050 and 1051, you really should be uh, doing that. And um, especially if you're doing the marine biology, I think it's better if you can keep with those ones. Uh, so yeah, I would I would suggest taking them, uh, you know, if at all possible. I know some people come with transfer credits, and so sometimes they're used. Uh, but I've had students have transfer credits and then go back and try to do the higher level. Um, like if they had 1020 and 1021, then they've gone back and tried to do 1051 uh, to make sure it's a refresher and they're up to par for the courses, uh, prerequisites for other courses. Um, and then there was another question. Um, I think this is along the lines of OCSC 1000. Um, the question was, is registration closed now? Um, I believe, Daniel, I think you probably know the dates better than I do, but um, I should know the dates. Um, no, I don't think it's closed. Uh, you're muted, Danielle. I was just double checking the dates. Mm -hmm. uh, quick hold on there. Uh, just double checking the dates for you. Um, would I guess like the other thing with that, if a student wanted to register for Ocean Sciences a thousand, um, is the course full right now? So, um, usually there's a cap of 75 students. Uh, it would be extra full. Now we have removed the cap. Um, so it is accessible uh, to students. Uh, and I think you can still register because I saw the, the, the numbers change just this morning. So I think you do, uh, you're still able to, uh, to register. I would uh, certainly recommend registering before because exactly when it starts on the 9th, this course, it really starts. Um, so you do have uh, an expedition module to complete. And so uh, if, if you're late in your registration, uh, certainly a little bit late in the course, so. So just double checking the dates, the 25th, the online registration system closed. However, you got till September 23rd to do the add uh, drop course form. So the course change form. So that will have to be submitted um, to the instructor of each course, so uh, it, uh, to the department. So if it's um, for any OCSC courses, you can just send to me. If it's, you know, uh, physics or chemistry or whatever else, you'll have to go to those departments with the forms. And this can be done online, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, do all of the courses have practicals that require going to the C? Uh, so that's a, a good question, and I, I get that students are usually quite excited about um, doing the hands-on uh, activities. So the way that we have our courses uh, built, our curriculum built, is that you have the first year course, which is the blended experience, or the, this time uh, around the, the fully online um, uh, experience. And then you have your 2000 level courses, with, which are your introductions to the basic sciences of uh, oceanography. 
And then uh, we have, so there's no uh, lab sections associated with those uh, 2000 level courses. What you have is 2500, which is a, uh, an introduction to practical ocean sciences. So it captures all of the uh, labs uh, of the, the 2000 co uh, level courses into a separate course. And so then you go at sea and you um, uh, also work uh, from the shore and so forth. It's a condensed two week uh, field course. And so this is where you get introduced to all the uh, practical um, or the equipments and all the techniques associated with ocean sciences. Your, your more advanced courses, some of them have uh, actual hands-on and lab sections. So uh, in aquaculture, um, in uh, marine ecology and various courses, you do have uh, lab sections then. Yeah, 2500 is a fun course. I haven't taken it yet, but fingers crossed <laughs> next year. <laughs> um, uh, we did offer it even in the remote fashion this uh, past yeah. summer. So that was a fun experience. Different, obviously, not like going on the ship uh, on the, 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 the boat yourself. Uh, but there were live demonstrations and all sorts of cool things. Uh, so uh, I think it, it, it was nice, nevertheless. Um, can you take volunteer opportunities at the OSC, even if you're not declared as a major? Yes, absolutely. Um, we've had students from many different disciplines uh, volunteer at the lab. Uh, more importantly, um, you can have uh, apply for a MUSEP or an ISWEP position at MUN. These are 40 to eight or 80 hour um, uh, work placements per semester. And I've had people work with our SEALs and public education from engineering, from education, uh, from business. <laughs> uh, we do have a, quite a few from the sciences, obviously, and, and marine biology. But yes, there's many opportunities and sometimes you just got to reach out. Uh, we don't often uh, post the volunteer opportunities. It's more through connections. Uh, but the MUSEP and ISWEP uh, undergrad placements um are posted through months so you could see them through the uh, uh, center for career development i do believe they're still there yeah and i would have that uh, so these uh, musep positions most of our uh, labs so mine and uh, the labs of many colleagues do hire uh, musep students and sometimes if you don't into a MUSEP position, you can still reach out to the lab uh, and say, you know, I'd like to come in and volunteer. So we've had volunteers uh, in our own uh, lab, and I'm, I, I know colleagues have had volunteers as well. So there's like formal positions that you can apply to, but there's also reaching out and saying, you know, I'm available a few hours per, you know, can I drop by and can I help out for grad students? And usually that, uh, that can work as well. This time uh, with the pandemic, it's slightly different as uh, there's no access to undergrads. So the undergrads can access the, the labs or the facilities right now. Uh, only honors uh, students have an exemption for conducting their uh, research in the Faculty of Science. Uh, so you need to, I guess, keep uh, you know uh, looking out for the, um, I guess, new, um, regulations. So as soon as it becomes possible, I'm sure the OSC will be welcoming uh, volunteers and, and students. So they continued on. Uh, I think you kind of uh, answered most of that, Annie, but uh, right now volunteer opportunities are, are hard to manage um, because we're there's not enough staff and people at the OSC and there's so many uh, COVID uh, restrictions and back to work uh, plans that it's very difficult right now for labs or uh, the general OSC operations to be taking on volunteers, but hopefully in the winter months. Um, also, I mentioned the Oce uh, Oceans Us, Oceanus uh, Undergrad uh, Society. Um, this is a great way if you're within, um, if you're planning on taking ocean science or marine biology, the joint major, uh, to join in there. They have lots of volunteer opportunities as well. So, uh, I mean, Carter, feel free to jump in you know more about it than I do. <laughs> I mean, you you touched on a lot of it. Um, the only thing that I could add is um, if the easiest way to reach out to the society would be through the uh, Facebook page, and I can drop the link to that in the chat in just a second. Um, Annie, do you know if there's a textbook for Ocean Sciences 1000 this year? 
Nope. So we uh, we don't go with the textbook. Everything is uh, online. So there's a lot of interactive uh, sites. Uh, there's uh, clips. There's all sorts of uh, contents, but it's all right there made available for you on the website on the course shell. Um, and I'm not seeing any more questions come in, but just one that I came up quite a bit in the biology session um, that I think is still relevant here. Can you take a minor if you're still, or can you take a minor if you're doing a joint major in a separate in two different departments, if that makes sense? I'm not quite sure, but I often get a question if you can do a minors with the joint major, yeah. a minor <laughs> in ocean sciences with the joint major, and no, you cannot because it's in the same department. So that's the only restriction there for us. Uh, you, you know, you can't do a biology minor either, and you can't do the ocean sciences minor. So. Um, there's a question, how has my experience been studying ocean sciences? It's been amazing. I would recommend it to absolutely everybody, even if you just want to take ocean sciences a thousand. Um, I am a little biased in that opinion, but, um, yeah, I think it's amazing. Um, it's in a great department and I would definitely recommend it to everybody. Are there any more questions? Yes. I was yeah, just if you I... think of any questions after yeah. the fact, like I normally do, um, you can reach <laughs> out to Danielle at that email there. Yeah, I would really encourage uh, students who are interested to go check out the website because there's quite a bit of information uh, in there, uh, in the handbook and everywhere so that you can get details uh, on that. So, and we look forward to welcoming you. Thanks, everybody, right. for joining Thanks, today. everyone. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Mercier and Danielle. It's good Pleasure. to see you, Carter. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you Bye. later. See you.